Hey guys, welcome to the last set of notes for reason or for unit two. We're going over reasonable domain and range. Our essential question is how do we find domain and range in the context of a real world problem? So for example, we've seen some domain and ranges be all real numbers. However, that's not always a reasonable domain and range because for example, time, right? I can't have all real numbers of time because I definitely can't have negative time. Time continues to go forward. So that wouldn't be a reasonable domain or range for time. So before we kind of get into that, we're going to talk about dependent and independent variable. So dependent variable. Your dependent variable is always going to depend on the independent, and that is always going to be your y value. Your dependent variable is y, which means that our independent variable is going to be x. Okay. So I have a little graph here, and it has a little zero down here. That's a zero, right? Because you always start with zero, and you go positive, or you go zero, and you go positive here. So this is just a little graph. So if you were to graph, your independent variable is going to be down there at the x-axis. And your dependent variable is going to be by the y-axis. Right? So for example, time. Would time be independent or dependent? Time is independent because it doesn't depend on anything. Time will continue to move on. It doesn't depend. So your time will always be like down here. All right, so these notes are pretty short. It only has two problems, and I'll kind of go over both, and they're two different kinds of examples. So number one, Ashton has $20. She wants to write an equation representing her money after buying a certain number of $3 gummy worm bags. All right, so we're asked to identify the independent and dependent variable, and since this note, these notes are over domain and range, we're also gonna find the domain and range of this uh, situation. So independent variable is our x, right? It's our independent, so x variable. And dependent is our y variable. So let's go ahead and start identifying. Well, we know she has $20, but what we're really talking about here is her money after buying gummy worms and then how many bags of gummy worms she buys, right? Because we don't know how many gummy worm bags she's going to get. So what is independent going to be? Is it going to be the number of gummy worms she buys or, is, or a gummy worm bag she buys or is it going to be how much money she has left? Okay, so for example, if I buy five bags of gummy worms, doesn't the money I have left depend on that, right? If I buy three bags of gummy worm bags, doesn't the money I have left depend on that? So your gummy worm bags are going to be independent. So this is the number of bags, right? That's dependent. Actually, I'm not gonna underline. Your depend or independent. Independent is bags, my bad. Dependent depends on how many bags you buy. So the amount of money you have left or your remaining money is going to depend on how many bags you buy, right? Like if I don't buy any bags, then I still have 20 bucks. But if I have one bag, then it's going to change how much money I have remaining. All right. The next part of this is we're going to go ahead and create an equation. So we want to write an equation. So what do we know? Well, first of all, we don't know how many bags she's going to buy, which means we don't know how much money she could potentially have left over. Well, remember, your dependent variable is always going to depend on your independence. So we're just going to have our um, y be, e we're going to have y equals, right? Because it just depends on whatever's happening to our x variable. y is just kind of depending on that. So y is going to be, um, where is it? Her money after buying. So her money after buying will be our green. Okay, well, what do we also know? We also know that she has $20 to begin with. So we're starting off with a solid $20. And then we also know that it's $3 for every bag of gummy worms, but we don't know how many bags she's buying. So we know for a fact that's going to be 3x. So we have $20, and I'm buying gummy worm bags, so I'm going to be subtracting because I'm taking away, every time I buy a bag of gummy worms, I'm taking away $3 from that 20 bucks. All right, so this is our equation. And now we're going to go ahead and talk about domain and range. Okay, just a reminder, your domain is x value, so let's look at our domain first. Now, before you can even identify domain and range, you have to ask yourself, first, ask yourself, is this discrete or continuous? Okay, 
You have to figure out before you can figure out domain and range if this is going to be a discrete problem or if this is going to be a continuous problem. So let's go back to the notes we had previously. We had domain and range of some discrete data. I'm so sorry, someone's moving tasks like in the hallway. So if you hear that, I'm so, I apologize. So yesterday or the day before, we learned that um, about discrete data and how to find domain and range of that, and also for continuous data and how to find domain and range for that. Well, when I'm looking at all my discrete data, what do you notice about all of my domain and ranges? It's just a list of numbers. It's in curly braces and I'm listing numbers because discrete, remember, is just whole numbers of something. But for continuous, all of my domain and ranges have um, inequalities pretty much, right? Because it's a range of numbers. It could be decimals, it could be fractions, right? Like for example, with uh, this one here, right? My domain is negative two to four, so it's any number between negative two and four, including all the fractions and decimals, not just the whole numbers. So you're gonna ask yourself, well, is this discrete or continuous? That's really gonna depend on our independent variable. What we're talking about here is number of bags of gummy worms. Can I go to the store and rip a bag in half and say, hey, I just want to pay for half of this bag? No, you can't do that. You have to buy the whole bag. So if I have to buy the whole bag and I can only have whole quantities of things, then this is going to be a discrete problem because I can only buy whole number of bags. I, I'm actually going to do this in a different color. Let's do a blue. Or she can only buy... Oh my gosh, I can't spell. Whole bags, right? She can only buy whole bags, so that means I have individual bags. So this means that for my domain, I'm going to have a list, which means that for my range, I'm also going to have a list. All right, so let's think about this. What's, you always want to start about the least amount of things or the least time or whatever. You always start the least. So what's the least amount of gummy worm bags she could buy, right? Because domain is X. And X represents our number of bags. So let's talk about what's the least amount of bags she could buy. Well, she doesn't have to buy any. So she could buy zero. And she could buy one, and two, and three, and four, five, and six. Because if she buys six bags, now it's 18 bucks, right? So she still has $2 left. Could she buy seven bags? No, because that would be $21. And I don't have $21. We have $20. So we have to stop it there so our curly braces will close. Okay, our range, our y values. I'm gonna have curly braces here as well. Let's talk about this. Your, do your range is gonna depend on your domain, right? It's the y value, so it's gonna depend on our domain. So if I buy zero gummy worm bags, how much money do I have left over? I have $20 left over. If I buy one bag, how much, how many bag or how much money do I have left over? I have $17 left over. If I buy two bags, right? That's six dollars. 20 minus six is going to be 14. So if you notice, here we're going down by three because every time you buy a bag, it's three dollars more. So if I buy three bags, it's going to be eleven dollars left. If I buy four bags, that's going to be eight dollars left. If I buy five bags, that's going to be uh, five dollars left. If I buy six bags, I'm going to have two dollars left. And I can't buy seven bags because again, I would be in debt. All right, so that's our domain and range for our discrete problem. Okay, moving on, number two, Kayla is 200 miles from home and traveling at a rate of 50 miles an hour. Write an equation representing the miles she has left to go. All right, so again, independent variable is your x, right? And so here we're talking about that she's 200 miles from home, she's traveling at a, 50, a rate of 50 miles an hour, and we want to write an equation representing the miles she has left to go. So. First of all, we don't know how long it's going to take her to go home, right? We know she's traveling 50 miles an hour, but we also don't know how many hours that's going to be. So we have our hours, and then we also have the amount of miles that she has left to go home. So which one of these is going to be independent? Your hours or the remaining miles? It's going to be hours because hours is time. Time is always independent. So the number of hours is our independent variable here which means that what's dependent on that? Well, depending on how long I go or how long Kayla is going and traveling, it's gonna give us our remaining miles. Oops. Okay, now let's write an equation. Well, again, your dependent variable is always gonna depend on your independent. So whatever's happening to the independent, it will pop out the Y. So let's begin. 
What do we know? Well, we know she's starting at two mile, 200 miles away from home. So we start at 200 miles, okay? We also know that she's going at a rate of 50 miles an hour, but we don't know how many hours she's going, and we know that our hours is x, right? Because right here we said that x is gonna be the number of hours, but we know that we're going 50 miles for every hour. Now, if I'm starting at 200 and I'm going 50 miles an hour, my y is gonna be how much I have remaining, so I'm gonna be subtracting here. So for example, if x is one, if I've traveled one hour, 200 minus 50 is 150 miles left. So after an hour, I have 150 miles left. All right, so, whoops. And I'll go ahead and underline. So we have 50 miles an hour, and then our green is going to be our remaining miles. Okay, so let's talk about domain and range. So again, you're always going to look at your independent variable to determine whether this is going to be uh, discrete or independent, or discrete or continuous. So again, you're going to ask yourself, there's a little arrow, con discrete or continuous. And I'm going to say continuous. Why? Well, if I look at my independent variable, it's the number of hours and time is always continuous. So hours is time, so we know it's going to be always continuous. So, I need to erase this, kind of ugly. Ugh. All right, so if it's continuous, that means I'm going to have some type of inequality. Well, like just like the gummy worms problem, you're going to start with the least amount. So for our x values, which represents the number of hours, what's the least amount of hours she could technically travel? She could technically travel zero hours, right? Like she just doesn't have to travel at all. What's the most amount of hours? Well, I know she's 200 miles away from home and it's 50 miles an hour. So how many 50 miles an hour is it going to take for me to get to 200? Four, right? It's going to take me four hours if she's going 50 miles per hour. So the most is going to be 4, okay, All right, because if I plug 4 here, I have 50 times 4, and that's 200. All right, in between, I'm going to have my x value, and remember, 0 is going to be less, is the, the smallest thing, and then 4 is the biggest thing. And then you have to ask yourself, do I have equal to symbols here? Yes, I do, because I could, or she could travel 0 hours, so she could be equal to 0 hours, but also travel up to 4 hours, because it's going to take her 4 hours if she's going 50 miles an hour. Our range is dependent on our domain. So let's talk about it. What's the least amount of remaining miles she could have? Well, the least amount would be zero, right? She could be home. That's the least amount of miles she could have left. What's the most amount of miles she could have left? 200, meaning she hasn't even left at all, right? So we have our y in between, and we know that zero is less than that, and 200 is the biggest thing. Now. Could she have zero remaining miles left? Yes, which means that's going to be equal to. And could she have 200 miles left? Well, yes, because that's what she starts with. So I do have equal to on both of those symbols. But that is it for reasonable domain and range. If you have any questions, please feel free to come in and ask.